Hey everybody, Jay Shlansky here from the Fifth Trooper Network. I just want to take a moment to thank you for checking out this show. Did you know that over at thefifthtrooper.com we have tons of other content, including blogs, other podcasts, all kinds of stuff. In addition, if you want access to exclusive content, you can join us on patreon.com slash thefifthtrooper and join at any level and you'll get access to uh, exclusive blog articles, access to our private Discord, and much more. So please, Check us out, and thank you so much for all your support. Welcome to the Notorious Scoundrels, a Star Wars Legion podcast bringing you the latest news, general perspective, and competitive discussion. Hello and welcome back to the Notorious Scoundrels podcast. I'm Kyle. I'm here with Mike. Hello, hello, hello. How are we doing? Uh, good. Tired. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's been a, it was, it's a long weekend and a long Monday. But uh, I'm here and we're talking about Legion. So, I'm yeah. Excited. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the same boat. I drove a cumulative like 12 hours in the past like 48. So I'm kind of, oof. Yeah. It's, actually, it was more than that. 12 is under. It's like 14 to 16. <laughs> um, Where'd you go? I went to New York uh, okay. for Mother's Day and brought a bunch of plants back from Maryland for mom. And, you know, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that plants, was... plants do seem to be a Mother's Day thing. That's the... become our tradition to go to the plant nursery and get a bunch of stuff and then come back and yo, I a bunch you... of things. This is like a super side tangent that probably yeah. isn't for the podcast, but we're going to do it anyway. Okay. Uh, where do you go to get your plants? uh there's a there's a plant nursery pretty close to our house like within 10 minutes okay the reason it's just just a local place okay is because uh for what i do for work i get like a pretty substantial plant discount at a few local nurseries in the maryland area really (laughs) next time you decide to do that okay i will (laughs) i will consult with the plant boss of the house yeah um, yeah which is my wife and i will see uh yeah we'll see if we can take you up on that yeah, I got like, I don't know, like fifteen hostas for like a hundred dollars. <laughs> just, just so we're clear. <laughs> okay, noted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Um. Well, uh, for all those that tuned in to listen about plants, here we are. Um. Yep, yeah, we're talking about plants. Uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you. This will be the end of the conversation about plants. Well, we can talk about other things that are growing, you know, like local scenes and tournaments and vehicle metas. There you go. That was a flawless transition. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> yeah. So we are going to talk about some vehicles today. We're going to talk specifically about vehicles of the transport variety. Uh, but first, we'd like to plug a tournament occurring in Boston. Um, actually, officially Wakefield, Maryland, but... Uh, not Maryland, Wakefield, Massachusetts, uh, which is the Boston area. But uh, we were just talking about nurseries in Maryland. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, June 1st and 2nd. And it is being streamed by the Fifth Trooper Network. So, um, you know, there's still tickets if you want to sign up. Um, otherwise, uh, feel free to watch it on stream. I assume that'll be on our YouTube channel, The Fifth Trooper um so yeah check that out it's june 1st and 2nd which was three weeks from now so yeah this this year's moving fast as far as tournaments and stuff go it really is yeah i'm not i've i've debated on going to iron world i'm I'm not sure i can swing it it's a pretty lengthy drive so it is surprisingly far um you know because in 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 your brain like New York and Boston are close to each other. And New York yeah. is only, at least in theory, only about four hours from DC. But that's not actually true. <laughs> yeah, I think, <laughs> They're not I think Boston's close to like, each other. Like eight to ten hours from here. Um, yeah, yeah, depending okay. on traffic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you're, if... you're driving all the way up the East Coast, which is you know one of the most heavily trafficked areas in the country. So and and you're like doing it on a weekend, which is generally we're moving into everybody's going to the beach season for like 95 traffic mm-hmm. and stuff you know yep. everybody's like on their way over the shore so uh, i don't know about swinging that on a friday <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh but for those that can make it it's june 1st and 2nd 
Um, so check it out and check out check out the stream. Yeah, it'll be good. Uh, I definitely know there's there's some some big names uh, going, so it should be good. Should be good to watch. All right, so let's talk about transports. Yeah. So Perfect. for pur- purposes of this discussion, there are actually what five transports we got the bus yep aka the a5 are we counting both versions of the bus as one version Uh, technically it is the same unit um it functions pretty similarly in both rebels and shadow collective but obviously the units you're running it with are very different so and there's some some exclusive upgrades for the shadow collective yeah rating party leader in particular which, which obviously is, which is, is a pretty deal. significant. Yeah. So yeah. let's count them as two separate versions. Okay. So you got the Shadow Collective bus. So actually this will be six, I think. The Rebel bus. Technically the land speeder, which can only transport one one unit, one model specifically, actually. Um be a lot better if it could take one unit. <laughs> it would be a lot better if you could put a whole unit in there. It would probably also have to be more expensive. But yeah. Um the uh lat i guess that's also two factions but that functions yeah. much more so well, it... the unique upgrades oh, no, but, yeah, are like yeah, yeah. bad enough that i think we can yeah. consider okay. it to be one unit uh and then the occupier tank uh, is that it did we talk about the snail no the snail tank that's yes okay sorry so that was only five the snail is six i knew i had the right number in my head let me let me just like double check that because I I think I think that covers their bases, but man, these days I don't I just don't play that many vehicles, and uh, sometimes I forget certain things exist. But I do think that that's comprehensive. Yeah, all right, we're good. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So some of these are, of course, more successfully played than others, and we can get into the nuances of why, kind of what makes a good transport. Um, but first, what are your thoughts just generally on armored transports? Uh, so when you say armored transports, are we, are we talking about everything we just listed or specifically ones with the key? I would like to exclude the land speeder. Okay. That was, um, that was where I was headed with that question. Because for two reasons, a, it does not have full armor. Which is a big deal. It is a big deal. And B, since it can only put one dude in there, its role is frankly very different than these other five. So Yeah, and I think I think there's definitely a lot of variation within the five that remain, right? Like the snail, the occupier, um the gav, the bus, they all do very different things, even though on the surface it's like the the general premise of this unit is put a thing in the bus so that it can get out close to the enemy or get it get it somewhere fast right when it normally couldn't um so yeah i i think the reason that armor well so two things armor right now is relatively speaking um pretty difficult to kill um unless you're taking something dedicated to kill it and and maybe to t- um gate that even further transport armor the the time in which it takes to kill the thing that has the armor keyword is actually extremely relevant because um you generally have a limited time frame to destroy the unit before it delivers its payload or does something horrible to you, <laughs> um, regardless of what that is. Like there's there is a timing window that if you miss it, like shooting the armor piece is almost not helpful anymore. Yeah, which is relevant because that armor piece is still pretty. Depending on what it is, is still pretty darn useful after it drops the thing off that's inside. For sure, and um, I guess to to say that you shouldn't shoot it anymore is maybe like a little bit hyperbolic, but. Oftentimes, what I, what, I, what I really mean by that is once it does the thing that it's going to do, you no longer have the bandwidth to shoot it. Right. Ge- exactly. General, you, you have You have other priorities, and it's not high enough on your list Yeah. to make uh, the cut. I mean, you, you look at uh, Ali Dyer's list, right? 
the the world championship list it's it's obviously has the two bosses in there but then it has a bunch of black sun and it also has those swoops which yeah. although not great from like a pure what we're used to thinking of as like a ranged speeder perspective once they're up in your grill those things are really annoying um and if you and if if you've got a choice between it, you, you can only take so many shots right so if you're in a situation where you've got like three swoops four black sun and two aa5s to shoot right that's nine things uh the aa5s are not going to make the cut <laughs> well, and I think even like if we put that into perspective, I think most medalists generally only have somewhere in the realm of four to six good shots they can take a turn. Right. Realistically, um, it, it may be like plus or minus one on either end of that, depending on what type of list you're playing. But at the end of the day, if um, you know, taking Ollie's list as an example, if you've got seven units bearing down on you in addition to the two vehicles, uh, the vehicles definitely come up last because I don't not, did the did Ollie's buses even have guns? I don't remember. I don't think so. Um, like, <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, some buses are running guns these days, but a lot of them are not. So most of the ones I've seen are not. Right. And in that example, like if you're going to shoot something, you want to, you know, the best defense is a good offense. You want to kill something that's going to shoot you back. Right. Um, Cause it makes it so that they can't kill your dudes. Um, right. So the, his, the, the bus falls down the targeting priority in that. In that I, I just checked his, his buses did not have guns. Yeah. So um, they did have some other upgrades, which made them like a little over a hundred points, but uh, yeah, at the end of the day, shooting something, that frankly is not that expensive for how durable it is and also is not a direct threat to you when you have numerous other direct threats to target is just it's just not a thing you can do so yeah yeah i think so i i kind of want to i think talk about each one of these transports individually because I, okay. like i said before i think they all do like pretty different things um and I'm, we've already been talking about the bus. Um, and I think it's definitely kind of the pillar of this conversation because, I don't know, do we want to bury the lead and just say it's the best one? <laughs> <laughs> it, no, uh, sure. Um, how about we talk about it last, though? Okay, that's fine. Um, because so, I think we're going to spend the most time talking about that one. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So why don't we start with the lat because it's the worst one by a lot. Okay, yep. Um. And I think, I guess we can talk about some like general transport, like check marks. I, I would say the lat is actually what it is, is it's just a transport. Every, a lot of, a lot of the things on this list can do like multiple things for the most part. Um, the lat uh, has a few things, I guess, going for it or against it, depending on how you look at it. But the main thing is that um the lat is uh, i guess technically is the, the classification repulsor um yes it is a repulsor vehicle but it's a repulsor vehicle that um like doesn't block like all the other repulsor vehicles on this list act as ground vehicles because they've got the whatever keyword it is hover, right? hover ground um yeah yeah maybe that's it yeah it's hover ground hover ground cool um and the lat has hover air and that's a big deal because all of a sudden you're not like blocking line of sight below your vehicle because your silhouette right doesn't extend to the ground so one of the things that the lat does in no way shape or form often is like provide cover to minis on the ground yeah Right. Or, or prevent things from moving through it, right? Right, absolutely. So when we're talking about the functionality of how the piece actually interacts with the game board, the only thing the lat does is transport a unit to and from. It obviously can shoot, but the lat's gun also kind of sucks, so we can kind of ignore that. 
Um, yeah. So I think the the lat does have one really cool thing I think going for it, and that is the size of its base. Uh, this is going to come up a few times today as we continue to talk about these vehicles, um, and how you can place them in your deployment zone. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Kyle, because I don't. Again, I don't run these a ton. I know you've you've had some bus experience in your life. Uh, yeah. um, I believe as long as the back you're touching the back end of your deployment zone with the oblong base. You're allowed to deploy out the front of the deployment zone as long as it's like perpendicular, basically. Yes, it, but that's only for the oblong base. The the lat has a circular base. It's oh, a it's ginormous a circle base. Right? It's a ginormous circle base, but yeah. it's still a circle base. Um, so that one can't go outside the deployment zone? It's, unless they changed it, which... Okay. I'm constantly uh, <laughs> you're good, you're becoming good, you're aware good. of how little my knowledge of the CRB. We can we can we can ignore but... this rule for the lat then, because I yeah. definitely in my head the lat's actually on one of the the oval bases, because uh, that's the shape of the unit. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a circle. <laughs> no, it's a circle yeah. base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Disregard that. Anywho, um, yeah. At the end of the day, the lab really doesn't have anything going for it. <laughs> um, it's 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 pretty fast because you can give it a speed three pilot, and it has a big base, and it can move over basically anything. Um, that's the primary thing it has going for it. Well, there's really two things it has going for it. Uh, that's that's the first. The second is that this is one of only two transports on this list that you can put Darth Vader in. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I don't know if that's the, as good as it used to be, but yeah. I mean, it's definitely it's a thing you can do that is powerful. I think we can say that is yeah. a powerful effect to give to Darth Vader is to put him, and and particularly, it's the only transport you can put him in and have him completely not shootable until he gets out. Right, because you can still target of him if if he's in a gaff because that's right. an open transport. Um. So there is that. I think the main issue, the lat, I think in contrast to the GAV, which I guess we can talk about next because this is going to roll into it pretty easily, um, I think has some durability issues in addition to um, the like the fact that it is only a transport, basically. Um, so if we're like comparing putting Darth Vader in a lat and Darth Vader in a GAV, and your soul, like if you're putting Darth Vader in a vehicle, you are devoting 400 points of your list, basically, to putting Darth Vader in a vehicle and dropping him off. And if that's your plan, you pretty much have to be like, this is what my turn one and turn two are. And if you're not doing that, like you shouldn't have taken the vehicle and Darth Vader, you should have taken something else. Like you and developed right. a different game plan, right? Right, yep. Um, so... The, if that's your game plan, you need to be able to make sure that the strike actually happens. The GAV is just so much more of a durable piece generally than the LAT because it's got the red saves um, in addition to to the armor keyword that, that the LAT has. I mean, um, they're they're the same, same health, right? Same resilience value, uh, but the red saves go a long way in making sure that you make it to target. And uh, I think I I don't actually know. The gaff's still pretty fast. It is because the as, space is huge. Yeah, it yeah it might be faster? Question mark. I don't I know. I think it depends on whether you put the speed three pilot in there. Okay, I'd have to. You'd have to put the bases side by side because because the lat, even though it's a circle circle base, is still a very large base. Yeah, uh, it's the largest possible circle base. So. I think the lat is probably still faster, but yeah, I'd have to put the bases next to each other. The point they're both very fast. The yeah, tank the, is the tank is not slow, is the relevant is, part is of this the conversation. Yes. yes, absolutely. The tank, the tank is uh not slow at all. Um and to boot, as long as you're throwing the uh, uh what is it, the RT 97C pintle on it, its range to attack at range four is actually like pretty good. Yeah, and it doesn't it's doesn't yeah, and it doesn't require you to have to like cycle shells every turn, like the 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 lat does. You can um, also give it a hammer's pilot, which you cannot put on the lat. Yeah, 
Um, which all of that is to say is that like once the actual drop off happens, and I guess this is actually a good thing to kind of go back and talk about the lat is that like once the lat drops off its thing, because it is a for all intents and purposes air vehicle that can't really interact with things on the ground or block line of sight or block movement it doesn't really do anything the rest of the game even if it did survive except, Whereas, except take shots with his relatively poor range yeah, attack profile plink 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 plink, plink yeah. may, maybe kill a guy type right. situation right whereas the occupier tanks like okay i dropped off darth vader now all of a sudden i have like an eight die pool gun to just like blast things with yeah um, which is which is relevant um the other thing the occupier i think we talking about the occupier we can talk about how ground vehicles the bigger ground vehicles start to interact with space on the game board and how it kind of like protects your army right um it's kind of like the next step up in the evolutionary chain here of transport vehicles is the occupier you know basically gives heavy cover to anything behind it right yeah um it doesn't block line of sight because it's not tall enough um, which is very relevant. Um, but it does basically like screen your whole army. It's a mobile, basically heavy cover barricade that you can, you know, mosey up the table if you're in need of something to that effect. Um, and it also prevents things from moving through it. They have to move around it, which is a big deal because that base is so large. It's very large. It's, um, I do think that from a certain angles, the front part can block line of sight. From if if you have like true two troopers that are flat on the table, sure. But yeah, it's not nearly as reliable as like the AA five or the snail that are just objectively very tall. Yeah, and it's uh, one of those things where like if you've got like any degree of elevation, even like yeah, like a you know like a small little box that's like a quarter of an inch tall, all of a sudden you like see over the tank, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it, it's definitely not reliable in that regard. Um, but you can start, you know, um, throwing your tank into positions where you're like blocking off objective tokens and stuff. This is where that sort of shenanigans starts, I think. Um, and I think that's where the real power of these transport vehicles comes into play in that they drop off a payload. In this case, we've kind of like outlined Darth Vader, but it could be something as... Uh, measly is a squad of snow troopers that have a flamethrower attached right like um that's still like a decent and cheap thing to just throw in the back of a tank get out at range one and start start doing damage <clears throat> it might not be as good but um, it is less of an investment and once they get out you can start using the vehicle to often like pinning your opponent into certain positions on the board is just better than shooting anyways. Sometimes and, you can and, do both. Right. And just blocking them off from accessing things. You know, it's it's a mobile it's a mobile building. Except it's a building that your opponent's units cannot climb over or on top of. So you know you, you could create a situation where your opponent just literally cannot access some important part of the board unless they kill your tank. And that's that's a good position for the tank player to be in, not a great position for the other player to be in. <laughs> so, yeah. And it's definitely, I think we're in a position where, you know, we see a lot of um, like Republic armies and I mean, even the experimental droid armies, like they want to, like the experimental droid armies want to be moving. So, like restricting their movement and particularly if you can like block off like a channel can really mess up their game plan because the experimental droids actually can't kill you. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah you know like they they're not going to be able to do that unless with the gab tank they get in your side arc but with lists like republic they actually have a very limited amount of moves that they are able to dedicate to their game plan generally in order to keep their army like cohesive um and if you're able to like interrupt on a very key turn you know, they're like, I have to move this turn. And you're like, yeah, I moved the gav here. <laughs> yep. all, all of a sudden, their world is flipped upside down if they haven't kind of uh, figured out that you can double move your tank into a position that's just going to like make it so they can't score intercept or something. Exactly. Yeah, Republic lists have kind of a, you know, there are a lot of lists that can do like move and 
where they can just kind of remain effective as they're moving. And that's one of the reasons experimental droids is so good. Republic is move or, right? Yes. If, if, yeah. if they're if they're moving, it's it's at a significant cost of something else. Um, usually scoring, right? Because that's the primary reason that you want to move or getting something into attack range, right? Both of those are very important things. Both of those are like a conscious, very specific choice that a clone player has to make. Um, and yeah, if you can, if you can cut that off or disrupt that plan for like even once, that's going to be pretty significant. So, all right. Uh, that kind of covers the empire ones. Um, should we talk, let's see. So we've done the empire ones. Should we talk about the snail? I think the snail is the one we want to talk about before we level up to the, the big bad big yeah, bad the evil guy in the room yeah. yeah um though i will say the snail tank shares a lot of um attributes with it to be honest it does um, so the snail tank honestly i don't see it on the table a lot and i think probably not enough um i think one of the things that the snail tanks um maybe suffers from as opposed to a lot of things that fit in the transport ca category is that um CIS doesn't really have a unit that often wants to be transported for the most part. Um, they don't, they don't have like a, I don't know, like I guess B2s. Sort of, kind yeah. Of. That's probably what I would pick, but there's not like a clear choice for what to put it in there. You know, you look at empire, it's like dark troopers or Vader. Obviously that's what you're going to put in there. Um, rebels. It's Luke, right? Yeah. Or R2, I guess, depending <laughs> on what your strategy is. Yeah, uh, or, or both. <laughs> right, or both, yeah. Um, and Shadow Collective, it's Black Sun, right? There's like some very obvious uh, things that you want to put in those with droids. It's, yeah, B2s, I guess. Yeah. They but just, it's, they... you're not excited about it. It's like, I guess I need to put something in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess like technically, technically Separatists can take Black Sun, right? Technically. They can, yeah, but um, it's. I've never seen it happen, <laughs> uh, but it, it tends, is a thing it, you could do. Yeah, the, I mean, there's a lot of reasons where that's like the primary one. I think that that makes it kind of a nonbo in separatists is that if you're running something that's not a battle force, right, which is the context in which you'd even be allowed to take Black Sun. Um, that means you probably care about order control or you're playing Geonosians, one of those two things. If you're doing the latter, you're taking Geos as your as your core units, right? Yeah. If you're doing the former and you care about order control, then black whatever black sun you take are gonna mess up your bag because they don't have coordinate. Totally. They can't they can't have orders coordinated to them either from B ones or whoever else is gonna be doing coordinate droid trooper or direct. So they just kind of dirty up your pool. And if you're playing like generic droids, that's going to be an issue for you yeah, for sure um yeah so the, the snail tank with with that aside i think the snail tank is definitely the best out of the three we've talked about so far it's got a pretty decent dipole um the repeating blasters at range four combined with the high energy shells um is it's a very consistent and, and what is it? It's a triple rainbow. No, not triple rainbow. It's almost triple rainbow. Dipole. It's it's one red short of a triple rainbow. But you got hammers pilot built in because it's surging. It's got critical, you know. Um, it's you know, pretty good in that vein, and it so brings it's one, it's one black short of a triple rainbow. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the snail brings into the equation the ability to line a sight block with your vehicle yep. um which i guess like really it's real tall what's that it's really tall it's, it's super tall um and this starts to bring in the ability to screen your entire army which which is where i think these transports really shine in that um you can have a thing get out and still have it be completely safe you can also keep eight units that are not in the transport kind of transported to a little bit because they're not shootable because they're behind your big wall right. wall mobile wall yeah right yeah 
Yeah, and uh, I mean, the occupier has this too, but since it does have reposition, even though it's enormous, it really gives you a lot of flexibility over how you're doing that. Like you can basically, not that you'd want to necessarily expose the side arc all the time like this, but if you want to really just block off a big ginormous part of the table, you can kind of skid turn your way forward, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, you know, most of the time, the 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 short end of the rectangle that is the oblong base is going to be enough to do what you need it to do. But you can always just like flip it sideways if you if you want to block an even larger area. So, yeah, definitely, like it's a trick that the the snail tank gets to do like once because it's going to die probably as a result of turning itself sideways because it, yeah. it ends up being the only target they can shoot at right and you you're giving them impact on all their shots so right, you've yeah. got 11 health so you can weather probably a turn of shooting and you might have some repair droids and you it, you yeah. probably have some repair yeah. droids there, it, right yeah um, you might have it has a programming slot so you might have defense protocols with a dodge token which yep. makes it like actually quite surprisingly durable Totally. I mean, that's my understanding is that the Europeans are running their experimental droids with snails with defensive protocols. So um, I haven't actually played against that list, but I hear that I I hear horror stories, uh, nightmares from from across uh, the across the sea. I have played against it. Uh, it is it, like you basically just it's a waste of time to shoot it. A complete waste of time, <laughs> which of which of course opens up other problems for you because. A, the dice pool is decent. Uh, yeah. We should also, in a second, talk about the difference between the, the generic snail and the experimental droid snail. Yeah, that's fair. Let me uh, let me bring up the experimental droid one. Um, but it. and it, it's it just gets right in your way. And if if you're in a situation where like even if you're getting side arc shots, it's just a waste of time to shoot it. You know, most experimental droid lists are bringing anywhere from like four to eight points of repair. Um. It's so gross how cheap it is for that. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Right. It's just, and, and you and you also have like the BX droids and the B2s to shoot. Now, usually the snail lists, I think they're cutting one of the BX units to fit there. that snail. Yeah. So Which it's is a, a little, deal. it is, but you still have two BX units to deal with and you still have B2s to deal with. All of which are more productive targets slightly than the snail. Um, so yeah, I played against it. It was frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> I was running a little bit of a weird Republic list too. You know, it was like a, it, I didn't have a lot of native impact in my list. So it, I mean, it's, it's tough to, I think one of the reasons we're talking about this today is that there are not a lot of things in the game that are good impact options that are incidental at the moment. The incidental impact that most lists bring these days is not good enough to deal with these threats. Yeah, which I think is probably a good thing. You know, you, you don't want like too much incidental impact, otherwise there's just no reason to bring armor at all. Yeah. Uh, I recall the early days of the game where, you know, the DLT was like the go-to stormtrooper weapon. That thing had impact one, and the T-47 at the time was like, I, I don't even remember how many points it was. It was too many points. Uh and there was just no reason to bring T-47 because it would just immediately die every game. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I I think that's probably a good thing. Uh, but you're right. If you're not making a conscious choice to take actual impact weapons, there's there's no way you're going to be able to deal with a, a, an armored transport that has repair backup. It's just not going to happen, even if you're getting weak point shots. Yeah, so. it's... Yeah, that's just how the game works at the moment. So... Um, I guess when we're talking about the differences between the experimental droid snail and the regular snail, I mean, the main difference is what command node and the arsenal value. Yeah, right. I believe that the experimental droid snail also does not search to hit. Right? It does not. That's correct. Um, and it also does not have critical on its heavy repeating blasters. Right. So, you know, it makes up for that by having basically more dice available because of the extra arsenal value. But... Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a wash. Sure, you're like I add two dice to the pool. It's kind of like I have critical 
sort of situation, kind of. I don't know. I mean, you can give it surge tokens with like, aggressive tactics to kind of make up that difference a little bit. Yeah. But... Or with bolster, I guess, or both. Yeah. Um, and it's probably going to have an aim token because you're handed it aims with, what is it, Kalani? It's Kalani the one that they, they normally run. Yeah, or just even the generic super tactical can do the yeah. same thing. Yeah, uh, you can probably give it a link targeting array. And well, and you and you're definitely like doing the strategize thing on the tank because you want it to have those dodge tokens yes. for the the nimble shenanigans. Yeah, so you probably probably got an aim or two. Um, you might have some surges. It, I mean, it's a good pool. Yeah. Um. So. I guess uh why don't we why don't we talk about the bus? All right, let's talk about the bus. Let's talk about the bus. <laughs> um so the thing that the bus kind of bring the bus is a suite of really it's a, it's a suite of value. And I have suite not with a W but with uh, you. Yeah, a, a veritable smorgasbord of useful <laughs> useful <It's>, stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like the bus just kind of distills like all the best things about an armor transport down to uh, the basics. It's kind of like being able to buy the channels you want on your TV a la carte instead of having to pay for like the $100 cable package to get 90 channels you don't watch and 10 that you do. You, like you're you're only getting, you know, the, at ba uh, its base cost is 75 points. Um, for that 75 points, you're getting a very large unit that is pretty durable and blocks line of sight and that you can put a unit in and that's it you know you're not getting any guns which means you're not paying for any guns um you're not getting any other fancy things on it but there's like a zillion upgrades that you can add to it if you want to add fancy things to it right you want to make it more durable you can add the gonk droid um you want to give it the ability to bring dudes back you give it a back world medic Right. You want to give it a gun, you can you can add a gun. But these are all things that you just pay in incremental chunks for. You know, it's not like the lat where the lat has a gun on it and you're paying for a gun, but like, do you do you really want it? <laughs> you know? I would I would definitely take 30 points off the lat and like just don't give me any weapons, please. Right. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> um yeah, no, for sure. And I think I mean, I guess this conversation aside. The more I think about the context of like what you just said, I actually think the AA5 is one of the maybe better designed units in the game and that it's just, it might be the most unique in that um, there are a bunch of different good ways to run it. And there's there's like not like a bad way to run it really. Um, but but all of the upgrades allow you to do cool and creative things with the piece. And I, yeah, I mean, I love that it has a lot of a lot of different things you can do with it, and you can heavily customize it based on the upgrades. And all the upgrades have like a a number of different points, right? Appropriate to whatever they're doing for you. It makes it a very highly customizable and interesting unit. It's not like a unit where you've got a handful of like zero point upgrades that you just slap on there because that's what you do. And it's a, it's a complete package. It's whoa. Now I'm let's, not, let's, I'm not bashing commandos not here, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the, the point is that it's like, it, it makes it a really interesting unit to build, right? Because you have, you have what's essentially like a blank slate, right? You've got the 75 point template that you're working off of. And then you have what? 10, ish different upgrades that all have varying costs and varying effects and like significantly differentiate how your AA5 functions depending on let's let you know let's count how many upgrades. I am I'm counting right now. I believe the answer if we're not including comms upgrades, the answer is 12. Okay, I was close. That was pretty close off the top of my head. I'm counting all the drivers, but I think that that's sure. relevant. Yeah. Because uh, each driver also kind of it's, it it makes a difference. adds to the customability, right? You, and and this is this is the Rebel Bus, right? The I am, yes, I'm looking at the Rebel Bus right now. The Shadow Collective version has the probably less because I think it's it has less. less pilots. 
It's still seven. It's still nine. Yeah. Still nine different upgrades. And it's got five slots. And each of those slots has interesting upgrades in it. Yeah. So I mean, even the comms upgrades, I think this is one of the units that the comms upgrades are the most interesting on too, right? You know, yeah. like all of a sudden you're talking about like, yeah, you could want LTA. Um, you know, the onboard comms channel is also like pretty cool, but <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, like people are swearing by comms jammers Com these jammer. days on the buses yep. too, you know. So it's just like there's a bunch of good options here, and I don't think any one of them is like right. Um, but you can you can kind of tailor it to your play style. Yeah. Please give us more units like the bus. Yes, that's yeah. really what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Is like the the bus is I think what I would like the um the blueprint for vehicles in Legion to be like in the future as far as customizability and, and stuff like that. If every vehicle felt like this, obviously they don't all have to be transports right um right sure but um if the lat had this customizability i think one of the main things is like the upgrades have to be good yes right um the lat doesn't have those things you know um but perhaps uh taking this conversation to where we wanted to head with it um the a5 has made a lot of waves i think and and i think it's kind of been in and out of the meta always, right? It's yeah. kind of washed in, kind of goes away for a little while while people are packing Anakin Saber Throw RPS stuff. And yeah. then it kind of washes back as, um, you know, the Saber Throw stuff kind of walks away. But um, there's not a ton of Saber Throw and RPS stuff going on at the moment. Nope. Um and the a5 has been has been back you know um and i think when we were talking about what we, what we wanted to talk about today on the cast i definitely wanted to take a minute to maybe appreciate the blocking ability of the bus and okay. it, it 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 definitely blocks better more better than uh all the other units on the list that we've talked about today. I think for all the aforementioned reasons that, you know, the GAV, you know, blocks pretty well, but you generally only have one GAV, right? A lot of times if you've got a bus, you've got two these days, right? So it starts to, you start to be able to do some pretty weird things with the board and being able to like, you know, put the buses together and sort of like a, kind of top of a triangle sort of like a v yep. and all of a sudden your opponent can't get to you they can't shoot at you they can't they can't do anything unless they go by the buses and not only that because the buses only have weak point rear you can actually do it pretty safely if they don't have any impact rolling around because you can you can do it so that they can't get to your weak point and if they can get to your weak point you can actually punish them pretty hard because Frankly, the bus's weak point is pretty narrow as long as you're not like turning around and you know showing them your butt, basically. Um, yeah, it's really only accessible when the buses have already kind of gone like all the way up into your opponent's army. Yeah, right. It's you're not going to be able to to quote unquote flank around the rear of a bus unless it's already directly right up in your face next to your units. So. Um, yeah, and that's but because of how the oblong base works with those arcs, it's actually a very narrow triangle. It's not like the side arcs that are enormous. Um, it's 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 really like, I mean, it's excuse me, it's even more of a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Tighter angle than like the ninety degrees present on the on the round bases. So. Yeah, I feel like it's definitely not twenty five percent. It's like much closer to like somewhere between 10 to 15 percent of like the circle around the unit yeah ish i don't know what the actual math is if somebody right. somebody it's, smart it's... in the comments wants to <laughs> right. figure yeah. it out and yeah do please, some please tell us. theorem shenanigans you know it's it's not a 90 degree angle is the yeah. point yeah uh yeah i mean they're they're hard to kill they're cheap you can get two buses for the price of one <laughs> occupier basically yeah yeah of, of course you're gonna add some upgrades on there and it's not gonna end up 
being quite like that, but uh, it's close, you know? I mean, yeah. you, you can, I don't think I mean, I've ever seen somebody run like one bus by itself I and have it be effective. I, I, they're definitely less effective yes. i think in that in that capacity right i think if you're if you're running one bus as opposed to two the flexibility that you have available to you is significantly less because you can't do the fun i i'm gonna air quotes fun because it's fun for you it's not fun for mm. your opponent i promise uh, um and... yeah i have a whole thing about the vehicle and displacement rules but we'll leave that for another yeah i mean at the end of the day like this is competitive legion and that's yep. those are the rules right and right and i agree with you i i hold similar viewpoints on the like this is really not fun and probably shouldn't exist but it does um and yeah i mean so what what's the most degenerate thing you've seen somebody do with two busts uh i mean the blocking just generally um particularly with hostage uh, I've seen someone like basically move a hostage toward their move an opposing hostage like toward their own lines by making it so that they just because you can displace a hostage because it's not uh, an enemy effect. Um, and you can create a situation because of how big the bus base is. You can also do this with Tempest and ATSTs, uh, actually, even easier because of how the scout moves and stuff work. But, um, with the buses, like you can create situations where there's only one direction for that hostage to go because you simply can't because of how big the base is. Like even though the the displaced unit's owner gets to move it, you can basically block out whatever direction you don't want them to go and force them to go in a specific way. And then you can do it again with your other bus. <laughs> yeah. And then and then after that, your buses are like they're they're in the way, right? Yeah, they have to go and, around and, them, and they have to go around them. And a hostage is only speed one, so you're you're just you're not going to be able to do it. Uh, it it's like trying to run around the edge of a of a constantly moving wall that gets in your way every time that you try and move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen similar things on bombing run where you yeah. know, like the the bus like drops a bomb and blows it up, and then and then like just body blocks their bob their bombing run units. <laughs> it's just like yeah, you gotta go, and it, it's it's like what three moves to go around the bus. It's a lot, you know. And that's like, if the bus is not consistently moving to like block you again after you move, and right? and that's which only, it can do, and that's only if they have one bus, right? right. Yes. Like if if they've got two, like we're talking like you got to move many more times to get around the wall, and um. At that point, is it even worth it? Do you just try and try and roll the crits to bull, bulldoze through? Right. And and what I think this is the frustrating part is like when you're making that decision, often often the right choice might be to bulldoze through, but if you don't roll the crits, the game's just over, you know? Yeah. You just can't get to where you need to go. Yeah. Um, I think I've also seen people kind of like do the V thing on like sabotage the moisture evaporators vaps. So that you can kind of make it so that you are the only one that has access to your opponent's evaporator, <laughs> um, and you can get there safely. Yeah, you 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 have a unit in there. You go to the vap, you block it off with your V, and the unit gets out and starts tapping it. <laughs> yep. And they got to spend like four actions to get around it or go through yeah. it. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. The VAP... fact that you can't move through or or climb over vehicles yeah. really makes this strategy particularly effective because at least buildings you know the whole point of changing the vertical movement rules is that buildings were considered to be like two in the way yes uh, and these are essentially buildings that your opponent can move to be in your way that you cannot use the new vertical movement rules on <laughs> to, to access <laughs> some part of the table that you actually want to so, in yeah. in before RRG update, um... <laughs> and now you can climb on top of opposing vehicles. Yeah. That would be I, that would be crazy. It would be cool. I don't know how functional it would be because, like, there are a lot of vehicles that you just probably couldn't even balance models on. Well, functionally, the bus would become like transport six. Yes, because if you could put <laughs> your own units on top of it, you just put them on top of it, and then you move. I mean, you'd have to have a rule like where. 
if it moved or something, it would just displace the units that were in its were on top of it. They, top of like, it. they yeah. would fall off or something. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> I don't know. It would get really weird. I'd be very surprised if that happened. Let's I, that I don't. I don't think it will. Uh, in fairness, the, the simplest way to like quote unquote, if 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 this is perceived as an issue, which again we'll leave that for another podcast but the easiest way to quote unquote fix it would be to just make it through that you can move through opposing ground vehicles at full speed um which i know is like what a lot of other games do with vehicles right because they, they don't want this to be a thing a and it's just it's simpler to make it so that you can just like as long as you can get to the other side you can move through them basically i think um i think that's fair but i do think and i think that this is an important thing to talk about when we talk okay. about vehicles and transports in particular is that and this is going to be me being hyperbolic but uh, the only reason vehicles are good are because of this ability in my opinion um, yeah it, I mean you'd have to look at some rebalancing I think if you made that a thing you'd be you'd be trading a mechanic for something that a lot of people view as uninteractive yeah um for less effectiveness and as a result you'd have to make them more effective or cheaper in some other way right you'd have to make them kill stuff better you'd have to make them just cheaper so that they can it's more about the unit they're transporting um you know you'd have to rebalance it you couldn't just be like just not change anything and then just say that you can move through vehicles um yeah yeah for sure yeah that would be uh, just a straight nerf to vehicles which arguably are fine from a balance perspective. It's more of a playability thing, and you'd have to offset that playability improvement with some kind of buff or something. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, yeah, and that's a, that's a conversation for another day. But yeah, I don't think I'm alone in that. I find the displacement and vehicle blocking rules to be kind of un uninteractive. I mean, uh, but. Yeah, they're definitely it's it's interesting. Uh I'm not sure interactive is the word. They're actually very interactive. Uh in that you interact with your opponent quite a bit. Uh, well, it, but your opponent's <laughs> options for interacting with you are limited. Are limited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, usually when I think of something that's uninteractive, I think of something that restricts your opponent's choices in a significant way that that they can't do much about. And if you're creating a situation where it's like, I have to either kill this thing or lose, like, because I can't move, I can't move my units to where I want to move them or to anywhere useful <laughs> at all, um, that, you know, I would consider that to be uninteractive, right? Uh, because you're, you're restricting your opponent's choices to an extremely high degree. And that's just, that creates less fun. Um, so you know, and I, I don't I don't want to turn this. Yeah, yeah, no, you're good, you're good. yeah. This is more uh, of a strategy strategy cast, but <laughs> at least for this particular episode. But well, but I do think that that sort of speaks to the power of the vehicles and that um and their blocking capabilities and the the movement. This is a very movement based game. Yes, and fundamentally, what all of these vehicles are doing outside of their transport role um is blocking your opponent's ability to move um and and that's what you're paying for with these vehicles that 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 is that is the thing that you're getting like yes you're also getting a mobile line of sight block with some of them but um being able to kind of prevent your opponent from moving their pieces around the board um that's the unique thing you're paying for should we talk about counters to this thing strategy real quick? Because there are some. It's there not are. just kill kill it or lose, right? Yeah. Um, if you're running like an all small base trooper list, which you know is experimental droids, is most clone lists right now, then your options are pretty limited besides just killing it. But um, if you have really anything with a notched base, uh, most of those things are going to block movement because they can't be displaced so even even like a mortar or an mk2 right those are those are both things that you can physically block a bus with um and i've actually had i had a game at pax uh 
where I was and I in that tournament I was running double vets with MK2s. Um and my opponent was running Shadow Collective bus with Maul. And I actually locked his bus in place <laughs> with uh MK2s and buildings. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. that he was completely unable to move it um how the turntables turn yeah right <laughs> <laughs> um so there are and it, it, i think you're unlikely to be able to achieve that result most of the time but you can at least like use them to limit their options about where they can go and block you right um because they're not going to be able to move over this so yeah, and I think even if you don't have small base troopers, I think w some of the things that I tend yeah, to do... Emplacement troopers? Impl yes, yeah, sorry. Um, that's yeah. what I meant. Um, or some other vehicle. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that units that are in melee also prevent displacement, right? They can't yep. move over units in melee. So often, if you can like quickly get into melee with whatever got out of the bus, um, you can often prevent its ability to reposition if it didn't move very far from from the bus itself yep um which often like the the buses are they do need to reposition in order to actually turn yep. uh they they have some like very awkward turning arcs um in that regard and actually this is a good time to bring up um i would highly recommend everybody go and look at the rules for turning your your vehicles um on the table yep. because you do displace things as you as, as you, you rotate position. yeah um and i see this is like one of the more common mistakes i see people making uh in the game is like not displacing units when they're repositioning and stuff and uh it is important and it can and the reason it's important is situations where you know if you're in a melee all of a sudden like your opponent can't reposition and actually get their bus where it needs to go yep. um so you know, a lot of these lists are backing like defensive Jedi, which should be able to, able to easily like move, force push the unit into a position where it would be very awkward for the bus to like where the bus would want to reposition the next turn and then jump into melee with them immediately. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a way you could do it. I do think that the majority, you know, like most armor counters, though a lot of the how do you deal with this is built out in the you do have to have a plan for this and it starts in the list building stage yeah i mean at least take some like impact grenades or something yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah you, you're gonna want to have some kind of dedicated anti-armor you know if you're clones that's going to be an rps or two if you're droids that's going to be like the, the b1 rockets are actually pretty cheap for what they do uh the fact that they have to recover isn't great but they're not cumbersome and droids do have access to free recovers so um b2has obviously have impact the uh magna rockets have impact um stabs can be like decent in this role because you can actually they have critical two and you can actually get some rear arc shots with them probably uh the ion spiders obviously are like ideal for this purpose because they <laughs> they have impact right they dish out ion tokens which restricts the actions or eats up repair um just to remove them uh, and they burn shields which in the case of the bus it, it's likely to have a gonk droid if it's purely a blocking transport um so that's like that's checking three of the boxes right now if you're if you're running spiders you're running normal a normal cis list instead of an experimental droids list and debatable how effective that is anyway but the point is like if if you want if you're trying to specifically counter armor as droids take ion spiders like you will shred armor with ion spiders you'll shred you'll shred exc too frankly you will yeah <laughs> i mean uh, you know i don't i don't want to call that like a I don't want to necessarily call it a good counter meta pick because you might just leave yourself so weak in the other matchups that it doesn't matter. But, yeah. um, you know, you're going to be great against other droids. You're going to be great against EXD, which relies on shielded BXs, and you're going to be great against vehicles. Uh, so, yeah, it's something to consider for droid players that don't want to play EXD. Run spy on spiders, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I think... Uh... 
I mean, generally, Ion's pretty good against transport vehicles in general, but um, I think Ion Ion's poised to make a comeback here. And when I say comeback, I mean be in the game for <laughs> like the first time ever. Um, I hey, think... I took Ion in my world's list last year. Don't judge. And it was actually decent. Last year? Yeah, Blizzard. I took Ion Snows. Oh, sure, sure, sure. That was... Yeah, okay, whatever. I had uh, the Snows anyway. It was cheap. Um, It was good in the Blizzard mirrors because of the Ion tokens work against bikes. And uh, Death Dark Troopers were a big thing, so... Yeah, I'm thinking more like land speeders with the uh, range for ion gun and the, the rocket on the back. Um, yeah, I mean, that would be another option, right? Just like two of them. Just quickly murk a, murk a BX squad from range four. Yeah. Scoot in, shoot them, scoot out. And uh, you use use the, the unstable astromech to do it twice at the same time. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I guess because, because of the recover, because it, of the recover, yeah. you can't eye on it twice. Right. It, it would it would be nice. Um, I guess you could like compulsory shoot recover astromech shoot again. In theory, right? Or does the astromech happen to be like uh, have a specific time in it? That is a good question. I have never actually used the unstable astromech. Oh, dude, it's so fun. It it might be my most no, yeah, the, the, my favorite upgrade in the game. It's at the, at the end of your activation. You, you so can that do would, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can do it. You could do it. You just compulsory shoot, recover, shoot. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that pulls like pretty good. It is. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's it is a, an unsignificant amount of white dice. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of white dice. <laughs> uh. But it is impact three, yeah. ion one. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, you can you can do some stuff with it. Uh, it is fun, and you can like pack sharpshooter on it and all that jazz. I mean, what is the land speeder with all the all the things these days? Unstable. It's one one twenty before a comms upgrade with the sharpshooter pilot. It's still kind of expensive. Without the sharpshooter pilot, it'd be one twelve. For the, with the I ion and the rocket think you gunner. got it. I think you gotta take sharpshoot by the Yes, I agree. Uh, uh so yeah, 120. That is it's getting up there. Yeah, we're in we're in uh you're costing 40 more points in range troopers range. Uh <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> range troopers, by the way, another thing if you're taking the impact gun that should be pretty good against buses. So yes, for sure. Although you don't get your sweet aim tokens if you're shooting buses. That's true, but aim tokens, generally speaking, on impact pools have kind of diminishing returns. Uh, I, because yeah. I'd like to qualify that even further. Aim okay. tokens against armor is pretty horrible in general. Yes. Um, if you have like a, a weapon with a high impact value and you're not as likely to like reach your full impact value on your pool without the aim token, then it's a little more valuable but generally speaking you know when you're real rolling two dice your chance to roll like an extra crit on those two dice are not good um, it's not it's not worth the action for sure generally yes it's not you should you should just move um or dodge or whatever yeah i see a lot of people like they're really confused as to why i'm like holding all my aim tokens on my armor shots <laughs> it's not worth it <laughs> yeah. i've done this enough <laughs> like this is not not Rerolling two dice is not in any for, way, shape, or form worth your time. Specifically for natural crits. Yeah. Generally. Yeah. It's not great. If you if you haven't filled your armor up, your impact value, go go ahead. Right. Obviously. But an, another way to think of it too is you know, if you think about like an aim token in a normal situation where your only option to reroll is white dice, you know, that's the chance that you're going to get something on on those dice is is two out of eight or three out of eight, um, which is significantly better. You know, that's two to three times better than getting what you're looking for against armor, which is one out of eight. Yeah. Uh, and most of the time, people see two white dice on a name token. They're like, Ugh. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah. They're like, no, no, thank you. Right. So yeah, think of a think of it like that. Aim tokens when shooting full armor. Not super useful generally. So unless you have super high impact value. 
Like if you're doing an, a fire supported saber throw, you're going to want some aim tokens. Un- unload your aim tokens. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it also it changes a little bit when you have critical insertion in the pool, right? Like yeah. all of a sudden, we're we're we can have a conversation at that point, but um, that generally only comes up in like very specific circumstances. Yep. All right. Well, any final armored transport thoughts? I like how we ended up talking about the land speeder, even though we said we weren't going to talk about the land speeder. <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's it's like that pet vehicle that I always like want to play with, yeah. but I never actually decide to bring because I know it's not good enough. Um, you know, sorry, Brian. Um, well, Brian's even he's doing buses now, so very effectively, by the way. Yeah, yeah. So, but I think I do think at the end of the day. Um, right now I do think you need to have a plan for buses and I think maybe more specifically than that you need a plan for and you need to be kind of more actively thinking about how you're going to deal with these situations where people are aggressively like putting their buses in places where they're not allowing you to interact with the objective on your terms yeah. Um, because I think up until recently in the game's lifetime, that has not really been a thing that I have seen a ton of. I th- we've seen it. It's been on the fringes. It's, you know, but I think people are starting to actually get good at it. Yeah. Um, is is the main thing. Um, I think people are starting to play the vehicles enough and starting to mess around with them enough that like they're playing it a little bit you can play the buses a little bit more like chess and that like you don't have to roll dice and you're like you're like i'm putting my my knight right here and it like there's literally nothing you can do about it you know you're you're check your turn you know um yeah it's a it's a way to like alter the game state without rolling any dice yeah so it removes removes the variability and you know, anytime you can remove variability, that's going to increase your chance to win, usually. So, all right. Well, um, go forth. Happy, happy armored transports. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are the notorious scoundrels. I'm Kyle. I'm like, stay fresh, cheats back.